the Union Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman drew on the principles of Jan Bhagidari and Sabka Saath Sabka Vikas while sharing the budget for the coming financial year. Here are the key takeaways across sectors. Let us start with the social sector and agriculture first. An agriculture accelerator fund has been announced to encourage agri startups by young entrepreneurs in rural areas. The emphasis is to integrate modern technology with agricultural practices in an attempt to improve productivity and also to increase production. The Indian Institute of Millet Research Hyderabad will be supported as the center of excellence in order to make India the global hub for millets. Moving on to health, to eliminate sickle cell anemia by 2047, the government proposes to screen 7 crore people in the age group of 0 to 40 years in affected tribal areas. In keeping with the theme of inclusion, a scheme to supply free food grains to all Antiyodhya and priority households for the next one year under Pradhan Mantri Garib Kalyan Anna Yojana will be launched. The 2 lakh crore rupees expenditure for this scheme will be footed by the central government. The Pradhan Mantri for particularly vulnerable tribal groups development mission aims to provide basic facilities such as safe housing, clean drinking water, and sanitation to these habitations. 15,000 crore rupees will be made available in the next three years to implement this scheme. The budget also proposes to use mechanical desludging of septic tanks and sievers in attempt to move away from manual cleaning. Those were some of the key takeaways for the social sector. What does the budget propose for the capital investment and infrastructure? Take a look. The finance minister has increased the capital investment by 33% for the third year in a row. This now stands at 10 lakh crore rupees. The 50-year interest-free loan to state governments will be extended for one more year. The outlay has been increased and now stands at 1.3 lakh crore rupees. The railways is set to receive a capital outlay of rupees 2.40 lakh crore, the highest ever. An urban infrastructure development fund will be established to create urban infrastructure in tier 2 and tier 3 cities. 10,000 crore rupees have been allocated for this and will be managed by the National Housing Bank. A national data governance policy will enable startups and academia to access anonymized data. The PAN will be used as the common identifier for all digital systems of specified government agencies. An entity, DigiLocker, will be set up for MSMEs and other businesses to store and share documents online. And here are some fun things proposed in this year's budget. One of the IITs will be identified to receive an R&D grant to produce lab-grown diamonds. 100 labs for developing applications using 5G services will be set up in the engineering institutions. Three centers of excellence for artificial intelligence will be set up in top educational institutions. The budget proposes a partnership with industry players to promote interdisciplinary research. And interestingly, a digital epigraphy museum with digitization of one lakh ancient inscriptions in the first stage has been proposed. There are a few things for environment as well amongst other plans. The finance minister also said that she has allocated enough funds to scrap old vehicles of central government as per the vehicle scrappage policy announced in the budget 2021-2022 to replace old polluting vehicles. To achieve India's net zero targets, the finance minister also set the target of 5 million metric tons in annual production of green hydrogen by 2030. There's of course a lot more, but the real test is how many of these schemes fructify? We have the rest of the year to see how the plans unfold.